Now we're going in depth about what's happening in Israel and how this impacts the United States. Yeah, today we spoke with a professor, Professor Rebecca Stoyle with Clemson University. She's also an Israeli citizen and we asked her what's different about this attack. I mean, honestly, the first thing that stands out is the scale. We've never had a single day in Israel with such a massive loss of life. Now they're talking about over a thousand casualties in a single day, which in a country whose total population is nine million is something like proportional to the population five times 9-11 in a single day in terms of the scale of the casualties. Um, of course, also unlike other attacks, there's a sense among the Israeli public that the IDF was caught unprepared. And that's an issue of much concern because Israel also has a draft. And so when people think about the IDF being unprepared or soldiers being basically left unable to respond effectively, what they're really thinking about is their 18-year-olds and their 19-year-olds being caught in a truly impossible situation of being overrun. The third thing that makes this different from an Israeli public's perspective is the fact that this attack wasn't a single terror attack. It may have started out as a planned attack, but it degenerated into an uncontrolled rampage in which families in multiple communities had terrorists enter their house, murder children in front of parents, murder parents in front of children. Um, there's one case in which two parents' dead bodies were found protecting their two 10-month-old babies who were left alive. Of course, the mass kidnappings, the hostage takings, the reports of mass acts of sexual assault, defilement of bodies, um, and just the visions of two and three and five-year-old children being dragged into Gaza as hostages, all of that are quite different from any kind of civilian scale of the conflict from the Israeli side that has been experienced up until this point. It is truly, truly horrific. Uh, so are the images of those attacks surfacing from Israel. Uh, they are hard to watch, they are hard to see. Like you heard the professor mention innocent women, children, elderly, uh, just being murdered by Hamas, a Palestinian group, again, designated as a terrorist group by the United States. Uh, we asked our local political expert from Furman, Dr. Brent Nelson, to explain more about who they are. Hamas has controlled the Gaza Strip for a long time and has fought several wars with Israel. So that part is not unusual. What is unusual is the coordination of air, ground, and sea attacks and the infiltration that Hamas was able to achieve without Israel knowing at all. And Israel boasts the best intelligence service in the world, and they were caught blind. So that is the... Um, that is what is so unusual about this. Israel's response is likely to be very, very strong. It will attack that southern area called the Gaza Strip. And we'll just have to see what kind of uh, military operation Israel is willing to conduct because the world is watching and um, mm -hmm. a lot of people are likely to be hurt or killed. Uh, President Biden did not speak publicly on the war today. We asked Dr. Nelson about what could be seen as a lack of communication and leadership from the president. But he thinks President Biden is working behind the scenes to stop this war from escalating. There is a grave danger that this conflict doesn't stay between Israel and the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Uh, the Hamas is supported by Iran. And there are a lot of indications that Iran was backing this operation. Clearly, Hamas uses Iranian weapons, um, mainly missiles that they assemble in the Gaza Strip. And so if this spills over into a more a broader conflagration between Israel and Iran, then um, other countries are likely to get in, like Saudi Arabia the uh, Emirates, and it's, it's not always clear whose side they'll be on, but um, it, it could be a very, very messy period of time. So um, let's just spin it as, positive, as positively as we can with, with regard to this administration, that they are working hard behind the scenes to keep this conflict from spilling over uh, into other countries.
We also asked what it means for the U.S. helping its ally Israel when it currently doesn't have a permanent speaker of the House of Representatives. I would hope that it focuses minds and helps the Republicans come to some agreement on a speaker soon so that they can move forward uh, with items like uh, additional aid to Israel. Uh, it That can't happen. Uh, th now, the administration has some funds that they can use and move around. So the Biden administration will do what they can, but eventually they'll have to go to Congress. And if Congress is still dysfunctional, mm -hmm. then it'll be very difficult. It would be um, probably easier to get unity on aid to Israel than aid to Ukraine right now. But nothing is going to happen, and the government may shut down if there's no speaker in the chair in the next uh, couple of weeks. And we would hope by tomorrow mm -hmm. we could have a speaker and then normal functioning of the House of Representatives can proceed after that. But this is a dangerous time to have chaos in the U.S. House of Representatives. And multiple reports tonight say GOP lawmakers held a closed-door meeting discussing a path forward. Uh, right now, Louisiana Representative Steve Scalise and Ohio Rep Jim Jordan confirmed they are running for the speakership.